Hi YouTube. So I've got my Dell G315 laptop here, finally, that I'm going to be upgrading a little bit. I ordered this guy in like late May and it took until early in July to show up, but I finally got it. And it comes with, and this is interesting, the highest model comes with the worst SSD and the worst RAM. It comes with a 128 gig NVMe drive. I'm going to replace with a 512 gig uh, XPG drive instead. That's much faster. And it comes with only 8 gigs of RAM. It's 2 times 4 gigs. I'm going to put 16 gigs into it. I've actually already put that in there, to be honest with you. Um, now, as far as the, the SSD goes, this guy will read about 3,500 megabytes per second. It's megabytes, not bits. And it'll, it'll write about around 2,000 or 2,500. Uh, the drive that comes in it, again, is one quarter of the size, and it reads at about 1,000, maybe a gigabyte a second, um, and only writes about 600 megabytes per second. So this thing is like three times faster on reads, and you know four or five times faster on writes, and four times larger. And it only costs 75 bucks. It's going to get cheaper. Um, now with the RAM, the HyperX has much better uh, CAS latency, and this latency in general, at the same frequency as the other stuff, it's 2666. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping that'll definitely be fast, as well as, you know, be double the capacity and half the size. I kind of wish I could have ordered this guy without any uh, SSD or RAM, because I'm pulling them out, but um, I'm really just going to document the process of doing that. Okay, so I've taken out the screws that I can. Usually what I do when I'm taking apart a laptop is I make a little mini map of it that corresponds to the screw holes, so I know which one goes where. Most of these screws are the exact same, but this guy is actually a little bit longer. Um, I couldn't get these two out completely, so they're going to stay in there for now. This one's a little bit longer as well. So, there you have it. And the next thing you have to do is, you can't just pull the cover off. Right in here, uh, it actually clips in a little bit. So, what you got to do is, uh, here I'll show you in a sec. This is clipped in right here. So what it helps to do is kind of like stick a little mini screwdriver in there. Uh, I've got a really small one right here that I can use. Kind of just stick it in there. If you push gently enough, it'll actually. I, can, I only have one hand free, but it'll actually push that out a little bit. You gotta use a credit card or something similar to kind of slide in there. And slide it in the gap, and you kind of just work it along, and it, it undoes the tabs, and this piece will eventually come out, at which point you'll be able to pull this unit off that bit completely. Alright, so I've got the cover off now. Uh, the original SSD came out here. It was really short, it actually screwed in here. It had this weird heat sink like shroud over it. Um, the, heat, the actual heat sink or the actual SSD itself would go in like so. Under this, the SSD is screwed in with a little screw right here, like so. Um, that's partially to keep it in place, I guess, but also maybe partially to dissipate heat. This unit actually does not fit over the XPG drive at all, even without the heat sink. So I'm pulling that out, leaving it completely on the side. And the XPG SSD actually has its own heatsink that, that you affix to it after you unbox it. So going ahead and sliding that right in there, gently, with one hand. And then screwing in the screw that goes in there. Works just fine. You can go ahead and leave this out completely. I actually uh, ran the computer a little bit without the cover on it. Um, did a crystal disk mark test with the SSD. And it got warm, but it didn't get like dangerously hot. So I'm pretty confident that this guy will be... a uh, relatively cool. As far as the RAM goes, those two 4 gig chips I pulled out and this one 16 gig goes right in its place. There's DIMM A and B. A is the one that's closer to the hinges of the laptop, so I put it in there just to be safe. Next I'm going to do, next one I'm going to do is boot this guy up and compare some benchmarks and figures for you. So after putting the cover back on, it's important just to kind of look around the edges here. Make sure everything's lined up properly. Right here it's not, so it's got to push that guy in place until he Tab snap. I really hope these tabs don't wear out after a while. And I can see, you know, disassembling and reassembling many times might wear them out. But point is, go ahead and snap those guys back in, and now it's time for some benchmarks. So I finished cloning the uh, SSD, or the image back onto the new SSD. And you can see that we have my old 118 gig file system on my 512 gig SSD. So in disk management, all I have to do is right click here, and say extend volume, next. Basically just click next. And now I have my full 512 gig partition 
ready to go. There you have it. I did a, a couple comparisons with the memory. This is the benches with one chip of 16 and one chip of 4 uh, gigs of memory, so the new one and one of the old ones. You can see that actually downclocked itself to 2400 megahertz. You have to multiply that by 2. Um, so that's running a little bit slower, even though both the chips are 2666. For some reason, it clocked itself down. We're running at a CAS latency of 17 clocks, which is interesting, because uh, it seems to be kind of the median between the two, the two chips. Uh, and I did some benchmarks here, and we can actually see that the old config or the configuration for one of each did uh, that on the benchmarks, which is 77th percentile of this particular bench. Uh, you can look at those numbers and decide what they mean for, for yourself. And with only the one 16 gig chip, of course, it has less RAM, but it does tend to perform better. And as far as the actual specs goes, I went ahead and I swapped out so that only the new chip was in there. And we can see that it clocked up to 2666 approximately and has a lower CAS latency of 15. So it's definitely the case that this one 16 gig chip by itself performs better than with one of the old 4 gigs in there. Um, but it depends what's more important to you. Is it, you know, is it capacity, like more memory, or do you want better memory performance? For, for me, it was memory, memory performance because I don't really see myself using more than 16 gigs of RAM. So I'll just go ahead and keep that one 16 in there. Um, by itself for my purposes so that I get a faster RAM performance but not necessarily as much of it. Unfortunately I didn't have the benchmark done of the old SSD, the 128 gig that came default. I think it got around you know a thousand megabytes per second and maybe six or seven hundred read or write rather. Here's the benchmarks of the 8200 Pro. It's pretty damn awesome. We're looking at about 2400 megabytes per second read and 2.2 gigabytes uh, write. It's a bottleneck a little bit. This drive, the same type of drive on my desktop, gets 3.5 gigabytes per second and 2.5, right? So it's a little bit slower, but still, that's pretty killer performance. I'm definitely happy with that. I'll probably go ahead and make a boot test video. So we're looking at pretty great performance uh, increase there from upgrading the SSD. I'm definitely happy with the RAM as well. I mean, I can definitely say this thing flies now. Just opening up your, opening up your stuff is pretty damn quick, and even loading games like Rust that are very. Uh, intense on disk storage. It's just, it's way, it's even way snappier than my desktop, honestly. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was a little bit informative for those of you that are thinking of maybe doing the same thing. So as, as always, thank you for watching.